Have you ever been on your own before? No, never. Your last relationship lasted how many years? Around 12. Sexual preference? Women. Is there a bisexual option available? No, sir, this option is no longer available. Hmm. And the dog? My brother, he was here a couple of years ago, but he didn't make it. Now, I'm, I'm really, I'm really interested to talk to you about this, Martin, because when it comes to some of these independent films, I like them. Not only like them, I love them. And Martin comes out and he's like, man, psh, that was some old artsy, fartsy, pretentious bullshit. But sometimes it's the reverse scenario. That's what I'm eager for. I've been holding back for a week. I've been so tempted when I'm around you to say, man, what did you think of the lobster? And I say, you know what? We're going to save it for the movie because this might be one where you and I might agree. But I get the feeling that we just ain't going to see eye to eye on this. We just don't have that kind of track record, man. Man, I... I'm a multifaceted person. I just want to be prepared for the worst. Okay. And the reason why, because, you know, Martin, Martin likes them straightforward movies right there. He don't like all that shit that requires you to, to think too hard. You know, I'm not saying you're dumb, but you want to lay it out for you so you can just go home and relax. You want to carry a movie with you. And that's the kind of movie, I mean, that's the kind of movie this is right yeah, here. Yeah, that's, that's my track record. <laughs> the, lo <laughs> the Lobster is that kind of film. David, played by Colin Farrell, checks himself into a hotel. For people who do not have mates in life, who do not have a partner, who do not have romance, husband, wives, girlfriends, boyfriends. And the thing with this world is that they're required, everyone is required to have somebody. If you're not, there are consequences out there. And this is a movie that was to show you how artsy it is. It was about to win the Palme d'Or at, at, at the Cannes Film Festival. It's by the, the, the American debut by Greek director Yorgos Lanthimos, I think. I don't know. Yeah. Is it Thor villain? Do you buy that in uh, the no. dairy section? <laughs> I think he was in 300 or something. Yeah. <laughs> but but uh, and this is, it actually won the jury prize at Cannes. And you know, one of the things that I look at with this movie, and I got to warn you about right now when I'm talking about how artistic and independent film feeling it is, I mean, it is major. It is major. This movie sets up its own rules in its own world and right from the beginning it's insane it's crazy and it ain't trying to apologize for it it's t look it's telling you right at the beginning it's like look if you don't like this crazy shit get up now and leave because <laughs> it's only going to get crazier from this point on for example the rules in this world it's, it's in a place called the city I don't know if it's the whole world or if it's just this city here but you're required to check yourself if you're a single person into a hotel and you have to find a mate. If you can't find a mate within 45 days, if you can't get points to extend your days of being single, then they pull you aside and they change into an animal. But you know what? It's okay because they say, hey, look, it's, a kind, of a, it's kind of a shitty thing to do. But at least we give you the choice of the animal that you would like to be. Sure. And most people choose dogs and other animals. No, not Colin Farrell. He says, I want to be a lobster. And he gives a very good reason for that. Now, the fact that you'll turn into an animal if you fail to fall in love with someone during your stay here is not something that should upset you or get you down. Just think as an animal, you'll have a second chance to find a companion. But even then, you must be careful. You need to choose a companion that is a similar type of animal to you. A wolf and a penguin could never live together. Nor could a camel and a hippopotamus. That would be absurd. Think about it. I understand this discussion is a little unpleasant for you, but it is my duty to prepare you psychologically for all possible outcomes. Now, have you thought of what animal you'd like to be if you end up alone? Yes, a lobster. Why a lobster? Because lobsters live for over 100 years. Are blue-blooded like aristocrats. And stay fertile. All their lives. I also like the sea very much. I water ski and swim quite well since I was a teenager. I must congratulate you. The first thing most people think of is a dog, which is why the world is full of dogs. Very few people choose an unusual animal, which is why they are endangered. So that's why rhinos are going extinct. They suck at dating. <laughs> don't know how, use, don't know how to use that tinder. You know, uh, when, I, when I look at this... Uh, I tell people all the time, like, hey, you know, it's a, 
it's a it's a cool movie because it lets you know like hey your dating life ain't so bad. I guess that's true. You know, turn into a lobster. At least you're gonna turn into a lobster. You know, <laughs> you know, you, are you even going to jail or anything? You know, you ain't gotten laid in a few months. Well, hey, you know what? At least there aren't any real big consequences right in, in right there in your life. Here there are, and it's it's uh it's it's tense for everyone who's there. But when you talk about being intense, one of the things with the movie is that there's hardly any emotion going on and that's kind of what i loved about this is that there was that you know there's there's all these people have this way of acting that is very deadpan almost pod people like they have no emotions at all which well it's very british in how repressed it is yeah yeah i mean re- re- repressed on to a, a level that's absurd you know what you know you're exactly right because when you look at it Okay, you know it's one. It's it's man, it's a movie that's gonna try people's patience because it's one thing to be as weird as it is, but it's another to just be like one of the worst British comedies you've ever been watching. Because <laughs> <laughs> even, even when these people get mad, they don't have any compassion or anything. You know, they just sit up there and just talk as dead band that's deadpan to each other as they were in another conversation where they weren't mad. Why don't you become parents too? And then we'll all be together. You're a complete idiot. Picking one of the few animals that can talk when you have a speech impediment. You'll lisp, even as an animal. As for you, they'll catch you and put you in a pot of boiling water until you die. And then they'll crack open your claws with a tool, like pliers, and they'll suck out what little flesh you have with their mouths. You're pathetic, both of you. I'm not going to be turned into some animal. I'll come and visit you, though, with my partner. When we're walking together in some park, or when we're swimming in the sea, or when we're on one of our trips. <laughs> yeah, and that 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 violin, that harsh violin, that plays mm-hmm. throughout the the thing. That that plays the whole movie, man. And uh, at this point of watching the film, that's where I would be like, all right, you know what? This is uh, some real pretentious shit because I can't stand when movies, you know, they not only are they kind of trivial in their in their artistry, you know, they're trying too hard to be independent, or are they trying too hard to be artsy? But I hate it when they play that slow motion and you got those strings that play through there the whole time. They only have like about five notes for the whole movie. <laughs> you know, they had one they had one dude with a violin to play the, to do the soundtrack. And the, the, one of the things I like about the first half of the film, I don't know how you're feeling about it. And I, I kind of want to say It felt like two different movies. It, it did feel like two different movies. Because I don't know how you feel. I thought the first half of the movie is where I found it to be the most interesting because that's where you're learning all the rules mm-hmm. of this world, you know, and you're, you're trying, you're still trying to figure out what's happening. You're trying to piece together what's going on. Is this even real? Right, because there's a whole thing of like you can get your time extended if you go out and and kill people or shoot them or something. You shoot, yeah, you you shoot, uh, you shoot single people. Yeah, you can't find mates like they're like they're wild animals and they get turned into animals. Yeah, so it's man, it, it's crazy, and I'm you know, and at least I had something to keep me going for the first half. I was saying. You know, at least I'm learning about this all this weird stuff. Now that I knew, now, now that I know what's going on, the second half, they pull out the hotel, and you're in this world where you are. It's it's dark, it's gloomy, and they're in the woods most of the time. That 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 violin is playing even more, mm-hmm. and then you get new actors, and you just saw John C. Riley and uh, and what's it, Ben, 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 ben yeah, Ben yeah. in, the, in the scene we saw last, and you, now that they're now that uh, David escapes and goes to these wild people in the woods, you see other characters like Rachel Weiss, who they only call the the woman who was nearsighted. Mm-hmm. So he even had these pretentious ass names in there, and that's when they start doing all that slow mo artsy stuff that I, it's just a pet peeve of mine. These kind of movies. We've developed a code so that we can communicate with each other, even in front of the others, without them knowing what we are saying. When we turn our heads to the left, it means. I love you more than anything in the world. And when we turn our heads to the right, it means, watch out, we're in danger. We had to be very careful in the beginning not to mix up. I love you more than anything in the world with, watch out, we're in danger. When we raise our left arm, it means, I want to dance in your arms. When we make a fist and put it behind our backs, it means, let's fuck. 
I'm like, but Martin's like, I'm gonna try that on a deaf chick tonight. <laughs> 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 End up getting arrested. She, she's nearsighted. <laughs> 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 if I try on a deaf ch- chick, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Doing this, that means I will rape you. <laughs> <laughs> now, Martin, I wanna, I just wanna say something real quick because okay. I want, I'm, I'm really eager to hear what you have to say. Just okay. let me say this first. All right. I was, uh, man, I was kind of getting impatient with some of this film. I was kind of, I was kind of bored by some of it, and then as it went on. I started thinking about it more and more, and I started to read. I started to understand what they were doing here. I mean, it's for for a movie that shows no emotions, for a movie that is uh, that uh, uh, where these with this weirdness that's going on about these people not being able to find relationships, and therefore they're treated like they're treated like criminals. You know, I begin to see the allegories that were going on. And some of them were obvious. I saw it, but then you know, I started to see how society. You know, this is an allegory for how society views relationships, how we view ourselves. Uh, how we view certain sexual practices like masturbation and having to, you know, you're ashamed about it. Can you make center me a little bit? More? Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, no, that's all right. And uh, and also, you know, I was, uh, I guess we help you some. Okay. <laughs> and uh, you know, I, and I was also uh, looking at how you know this movie is requiring you to put the work in to see that with the things that are not so obvious. You know, and I and, and it, didn't, it wasn't until the end of the film. When I was thoroughly kind of creeped out by the end, where I thought this is a bittersweet ending or this is a nice ending with ominous undertones, where I thought, man, this movie's sticking with me. This movie, I'm, I'm fi- especially in the second half, because the first half is about getting into relationships, courtship, and all told through all the weirdness that you see right here. And the second half is all about, you know, what's it like to be in a relationship and all the in, in, in all the areas that we have to put up for that well also with the outside pressure from other people and you know what with, with, with that like you know you have your relationship but you have all these other influences outside of what you have right there yeah it's all about being in empty relationships mm-hmm. and how we have to put on airs for other people to make them feel better you know to make us feel better about ourselves man i i walked out of this and i was like god damn this shit is deep <laughs> you know, I, was, <laughs> I was thinking about this for a long time i when i went home and started talking to my girl about it we we had an hour-long discussion about this film, and she hadn't even seen it. And I did it without even spoiling anything for her. I, That's you know, deep, man. I know. Martin, like, yeah, you full of shit, too. <laughs> no, no, because or here's my thing about it. Like, what you got out of it, I'm sure there are people who will get that. Like I said, I, I work right next, to, right next to a guy, and that was like he was blown away by it. So mm-hmm. I was been looking forward to seeing this for quite a while. And then when I did, uh, I was kind of like you, where I'm like, yeah, okay, you're making a statement about the pressure to get into a relationship. It's it's absurd comedy. and uh, I got it. I really do got it. <laughs> you you can stop now. <laughs> you can move on to something else. And then it comes in, the second half is like a completely different movie. And I'm like, wow, okay, it's depressing and it's pretentious, sure. It's kind of off the wall. It's absurd. It's, it's, uh, it's good on my fucking nerves, to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, if you... if. If this movie could have been compressed into 35 minutes, I would be like, wow, that was really cool. As it was, it just drew out to a point where I was just like, look, if if somebody likes it, I wouldn't say to them, like, yeah, because you wanted them. I'm like, hey, man, I get it. Especially if you're lonely or you have a lonely core, it could speak to you because it, that's what it's trying to do. Uh, but I found it, as you say, I, the pretentiousness took second place to the tediousness of it and, and like but that that thing with the the violin coming in it was almost like it like it was almost like a laugh track but like like a like like some kind of like mocking laugh track it's like okay it's funny because in that first half you have a, a woman a character who's she's emotionless and heartless mm-hmm. But everybody's so emotionless. But no, you know what, no, you're not feeling. You're not feeling. You're not feeling. <laughs> no, you know what I liked. What I loved about that is that. Yeah, it seemed like everybody was emotional and was uh, not emotional and heartless, but they even made a statement with people not emoting about how people have no feelings, how people can just be psychotic. Mm -hmm. And I thought, man, they're doing so much with so little right here. And there's so many layers of relationships that, yeah, it didn't get really old to me. I mean, maybe when I first was watching it, but as I said, the more I thought about it, I thought... Man, you know, I this you know, if you just give it a little bit of time to sit on it, I really uh, admire movies that you do not have to just see in one sitting. You leave and then you're gone. 
You know, and it's gone from you. I like when movies actually make me think about things. I'm not talking about, oh, man, shit, that fight at the airport was cool when Spider-Man came in. You know, I'm talking about. But it was, though. But no, it was. It was badass. <laughs> Nobody's denying that. <laughs> I mean, somebody said, I want to be Spider-Man. You know, I want to be. <laughs> and I actually turned to Spider-Man. Well, Adam, you want to be Spider-Man. <laughs> so Spider -Man. <laughs> I want the man on it. <laughs> but I'm telling you, man, it's the same thing that we went through with Enemy. I know. You know, but as things are revealed to me, not just it look cool, things are revealed to me. They keep, I'm like, oh, wow, I didn't like that part, but now I know what it means. And I'm sitting up there lying in bed and can't sleep. I, I don't know, man. You know, we got two different things when it comes to this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, well, you know, the thing with Enemy was I really enjoyed it and was so, like, let down and shocked by the end that it was like, <laughs> dang, that left a bad taste in my mouth with something that I was loving so much. Whereas this was something where I was just kind of like, huh, well, I don't hate it and I don't. I can understand somebody liking it, but it is not for me. The The execution of it ultimately did not serve me. So what would you give it? I'd give it a rental. Give it a rental. I tell you, man, I was on the verge of giving this. Uh, even when I saw it, I, know I was kind of bored by some parts. I was going to give it a matinee. Mm -hmm. So even then, I liked it. But that's why I hate That's why I hate when people ask us to fill out those forms when we come me out too. the movie. Because I need time to think. Yeah, sometimes you got to digest things. Yeah, you want me to be fair? Let me go home. And I hate using this word, but I can't think of nothing else. Marinate on it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's what happened in this case right here, man. I, had, I just needed a drive home. A dinner, a beer, and after a while, I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Did you drop your coffee cup? <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's slow motion. I'm actually looking at it in real time like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, man. I was, I was watching this. I said, wow, I, I, this movie is, is, is making me work for it. This yeah. Movie. And plus, it's an actor's film. These people are here to act. Colin Farrell got fat for this. He ate lobsters for this shit. I mean, it was, it was uh, Colin Farrell. He gained role. He gained weight for this role, and it's kind of cool to see actors go all the way for that and just let themselves. I mean, because really, they let themselves hang. They take shirts off. There's there's men and women sitting all around where they got to uh, undress before the wait staff at the hotel. And you know, they they that's another statement that the movie's making. It's not about beauty. It's not about attractiveness. No. It's about all these plain-looking people. Some of them downright unattractive, trying to find love. God damn, this shit is deep, Martin. I loved it. I mean, I, th th that's the thing. It's like I don't dislike this movie because it does have some deep parts, uh, especially like uh, you know the the arc with Ben Wishaw, what he does just to be in a relationship. And you, that's what I'm talking about. Like I can't give things away, but it's I not know, yeah. just oh relationships are this, relationships are that. No, it's going through stages. Stages, Martin, and I, 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 I like that. Like I said, there's, there's these parts of it I like. What it's, what it's about, I like. It's just ultimately the execution for me was not enjoyable. Martin, for once, just let the shit sink in. Don't think, <laughs> don't think about it too hard, Martin. Hey, man, I, I owe a debt to these people out here who are paying us. <laughs> I'm just, Martin. You know, let, 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 go home. Don't make judgments. Sleep on that shit for a little while. Martin. You, you're telling a critic not to make judgments? Not the kind you make. <laughs> judgments. Mm, no. Make his judgments. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> Think about it and then give it a full price like I'm <laughs> You know, that's all I'm asking you to do. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Just think about it. You know, I'm, this shit is so deep. Man, what, what, what more can I give you? I ain't saying you're wrong. I ain't saying you're pretentious or artsy. I know you're not, but you want to. No, I don't. <laughs> Dude, this but, is like the biggest gap I've seen y'all have with a rating. Like, so him, you go on rental and you go on full price. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? And let me tell you something else. Not only to say something to me about relationships, but it made me look up lobsters. When the dude was talking about lobsters oh, no, for that, that's all years, true. Is that true? Yeah, that's yeah. Because I didn't know because I, I went and looked the shit up. Yeah, uh, Radio Lab did a special on that. Because oh, I was looking up uh, information here. Like, I... Lobsters can live for over 100 years, Martin. Yeah. And they will keep growing in size as long as they live. Yep. The oldest lobster was caught by one man in 1977. It was 44 pounds. And they thought that son of a bitch was 140 years old. And he was delicious. And, oh, <laughs> stop it, Martin. He fed a family of five. <laughs> and lobsters are thought to be immortal. Yep. But they will eventually die due to a process called molting. And that is where they shed their exoskeleton, Martin. The movie was educational to me, too. Well, Mar I already knew that before I, I went to, say, to the you movie. Just that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Man, I saw this movie. They talk about the Earth goes around the sun, dude. Full price. Man, it's fucking love. Love is a punk. This Galileo guy is on the sun. Oh, man, I was going for my last thing right there. That was my last thing right there. Let me, let me give me, let me drop these facts on these lobsters. He gonna see my point of view. Just... Yeah, I, I knew all that already. Oh, fuck you, there, man. I didn't have that class. <laughs> Dropped out of college before I got there. Did you have your lobster class there, Zach? No. So you didn't know this shit, did you? What year are the most tasty? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't get that far. <laughs> I'm still studying, still oh, doing Zach, my research. Zach not knowing is like father like son. <laughs> oh. Oh. No. Boy, you going to let him talk to your dad like that? <laughs> <laughs> you better you something. If you have any problems, you cannot resolve yourselves. You will be assigned children. That usually helps.